Good morning, uh, good afternoon, or perhaps for some of you, even good evening. Uh, again, for the second week in a row, welcome to my living room. My name is Reverend Michelle Stanford, and I am an associate priest here at St. Thomas St. Beckett. I'm filling in while Reverend David and his wife Carolyn are away on vacation. They are returning next week. It's been my pleasure to join you remotely. Thank you to many of you who sent me emails expressing your enjoyment of our time together. We've spent the last three weeks talking about prayer. And this in our last uh, time together, um, until perhaps we see each other live in September, we're going to talk about how we use our prayer life, uh, how we use prayer to help us know where God is calling us to help us see where God is in our lives. The term we use uh, in faithful ministry is that of discernment. How do I discern? How do I know, understand God's will? One of my most favorite ways of spending time in prayer life is being quiet, being silent, not actually praying at all using words, just allowing myself to be still and listen. We know from the book of Samuel, that famous line, here I am, here I am, here I am. What is it that you're calling me to do? Let us pray together as we start our worship together, the colic of the day. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our readings, which follow, include the following. We will listen to Psalm 25, continuing our theme of Psalms, using the Psalms as possible prayers. The second reading is from the Old Testament book of Samuel. As we hear and are reminded of the story of Hannah and her seeking God's grace and presence in her life. And then lastly, the gospel is from the book of Luke, that time when Jesus himself prays to God for God's will to be done. I invite you to listen to the scriptures. The three readings we will reflect on today are along the lines of the theme on how do we offer ourselves up to God? How do we pray in a way that allows us to hear and listen for God's guidance, for his direction, for his inspiration, so that we cannot be led only by our worldly human desires, but that we can sense God's desires for us. We have another psalm, of course, another wonderful song of David, Psalm 25 we will start with, followed by an Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel, um, into, looking into the life of Hannah. And then lastly, we will uh, continue with Luke in chapter 22 and be reflecting on how Jesus himself is in prayer with uh, his father. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his degrees. 
For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity, and their children shall possess the land. And the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. And he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are forever towards the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me put, be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me. For I wait for you, Redeemer Israel, O God, out of all its troubles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Samuel, the first chapter, 1, verses 9 to 28. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and do not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child. Then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as worthless, woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarries, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was said no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Then the man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an alpha of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. And they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed. And the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is given to the Lord. And she left him there for the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. 
When Jesus reached the place, he said to the disciples, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In this anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer, Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. discerning at the final stages of four years when I felt called to be an Anglican priest, I went off to St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is an organization of Anglican monks that is resident in Cambridge right near Harvard University, and they also have a farm um, out in Massachusetts called Emory House. And I was there for a six-day silent retreat. And one of the prayer teachings that was happening that week when I was there was that of contemplative prayer. And contemplative prayer is the alighting, if you will, like when you think of the mosquitoes we see this summer, that they kind of, they take, they alight onto our arms. Well, this is sort of the settling of ourselves into a quiet space with or without others, where we bring ourselves into a place of openness, a mindset of openness, without any pre-arranged agenda, if you will. So if you, if, you, if you consider contemplative prayer compared to some of the other prayer types we've talked about over the last month. So we began with prayers at a time and a place when we might be fearful or angry or upset or anxious. Um, actually not angry, but in the second week we did talk about anger. We specifically talked about our relationship with God and being in a relationship of authenticity and integrity where we trust in the love that God has, has for us and from a place of love, 
we can speak when we're upset with him, when we're not seeing and feeling his love the way that we know is present. And then we talked last week about gratitude, prayers of gratitude, prayers of thanksgiving. You know, thank God this happened. Thank God for our health, for our family, for our friends, for our country, for our, for our, our, our great lives we have. And we pray together every week in our intercessory prayers. So prayers that we give up to God on behalf of other people. We pray for those who are sick or unwell in positions of leadership, um, people to know God, etc. So contemplative prayer or prayer like I'm inviting us to think about today is prayer where we open ourselves up and specifically put ourselves into a prayerful or conversation with God whereby we're listening. We're listening to seek and understand where is God calling me in my life. So it might not feel as simple and straightforward as just kind of sitting down on the couch and you know saying, God, I'm here. Uh, let me know what you want me to do. Um, I say that I say that a little tongue in cheek because when I was a child, like up until like in my 20s even, when I would pray to God, my prayers, I would always start them by saying, Hi, God, it's me, Michelle Stanford, 7 Thorcliffe Drive, Belleville, August 11th, 1967. And because I thought, oh, God has so many people calling, keeping track of, how is he going to know exactly who it is that's speaking to him? Well, of course, I have a different prayer life now, and I don't often tell God who's who's calling when I, you know, ring him up. Our ability to say to God, here I am, how are you calling me, can be complicated and can be, we can, it can be hard for us to trust. Are we hearing what God is asking of us? Or is there some ego in the way? Is there some emotion? Is there some too much thinking going on? So my invitation to you is to explore these three practices as part of a discipline that will help sort of strengthen your contemplative prayer muscles. So the first is to do this. The first is as you go about your life, including your volunteer work, your employment work, and your any role that you may have uh, in our community. So you might be a server, you might be on the team that's helping us with new activities, and disciplines that we have to undertake in the next several months to keep each other safe. Sometimes we wonder, you know, especially when we're challenged with interactions with other people, how is God's will being done here? Is it being done by people with status and power and influence and titles? Is it being done by people with pure hearts and well-meaning intentions? Or is it being done by, through other means and, and maybe we've lost ourselves in terms of keeping God at the center of what we're trying to do. I had a wonderful mentor in Andrew Asbel when I was a student. He was my priest at my first parish that I did my internship. And when there were tensions and not even strife so much, but when things began to be too too corporate or too automated or too process oriented and or at the opposite maybe not compassionate or graceful or kind or thoughtful or patient enough he would sort of cut the tension or the angst or start us off by asking us where is god in this where is god in this conversation where is God in this newsletter? Where is God in this new menu? So my invitation to you is your first practice to try to start to open yourselves up to hearing and feeling and sensing where God is calling you is to ask yourself or ask others. It's a two-step process, but do I feel and see God in this moment? Sometimes God's presence may or may not be evident. 
oftentimes you will feel God's presence in other people because we are, as faithful followers of Christ, we are the presence of the Holy Spirit here on earth. Through our love and our compassion and our kindness and our generosity, we get to be the presence of God in a moment. The presence of God that needs forgiveness or patience or tolerance or acceptance, we get to be that. So sometimes, and it's without judgment, we can help to see and feel God's presence and him calling us by simply looking at a situation and identifying where God is. And if God isn't present in that situation, that brings me to the second, to the second practice. So we're asking and we're having conversations about where we see God's presence in our lives. And if we're in a situation where God's presence, which is the power of the Holy Spirit present in that space of love and generosity and compassion and gracefulness and patience and forgiveness, if there isn't a lot of that in the situation that you see, then you get to be that. You get to be the person who is patient or generous or compassion. And maybe it's to one person in the group, or maybe it's to the whole group. But you can be the one that says, with a deep breath, I can be God's presence here. A story that perhaps I've shared before is about my internship that I spent at Sick Kids Hospital on the cancer floor. I asked to go into a place, an environment where there was great suffering and where I was as a pure believer going to struggle to see God's presence. What kind of loving God allows children to die? And I can tell you so many stories, but I will just sum up all those stories by telling you that it was in all of the simplest of details and the everyday efforts of what would be otherwise unremarkable jobs and unremarkable people that there was grace and patience and acceptance and love and generosity and grace. There was so much love exuding from the cleaners, from the hosts, from the fast food people, from the Starbucks staff, from other parents, from other children, from sicker children helping less sick children, that there is a presence of God around us when we look for it. So when we then become that presence, right? When, when we can stop and see a circumstance that needs us to show up as that faithful presence, where is God? Here I am. I'm not God. I'm not God, but I'm of God, right? I'm a beloved creature of God, and I have embraced my faith and embraced the position that I take that says, I will love God with my whole being, and I will love others. So let me step into this space, this meeting, this uh, event, this interaction, and let me just be someone that offers up that love. Discerning God's call in our lives. Those two first practices, looking and seeing and exploring and talking about the presence of God in all kinds of different circumstances. And then secondly, where there is an evident absence to you, how we can be that presence. Those are two really good practices to start to strengthen your muscles to allow you to be more comfortable listening to where God is. The next practice, you can start right away if you're game, and that's why I picked Psalm 25, because it's a wonderful practice to read out loud this psalm before you sit in sort of a meditative state. So without a prayer, without a scripture, without an agenda, without intercessory prayers for other, without thanksgiving prayers, without asking for God's help, you can simply sit and try to focus your efforts on calling God's call into your life. 
I often, I'm going to try to take you for a walk here. This could go very badly, but I often find that I need to create in my life a sacred space, a place where I'm able to light a light like a bug and to just sit and be quiet. I have that space in the basement, but I also have created a space for me outside. It's very loud and I'm just going to show you it and see how, how far away you can see. And it's what I call my contemplative prayer space or the space that I like to go when I need to put my agenda aside, to put my emotions and my intellect and my ego and my anxiety and all my upset aside. I have a wonderful backyard with a nice pool and that's the loud waterfall you hear right now. But this is my little space. This is my little space. So you can see the cross in the middle and my sort of two little panes here. And I'll bring you a little closer. It's my privilege to, to be able to be in this space where I can just sit on my little couch here and I can reflect on where God is calling me in my life. Do I understand? Oh, isn't that nice? We have the sun in our background to so say hello. Is, is God calling me in a way that I'm being responsive to, or am I setting my own agenda? That's it. So I often read Psalm 25, and then I just sit. And at the end of 15 minutes, sometimes that's about as long as I can sit. You know me, I'm a bit of a mover. I may not have felt something or heard something or even know something, but what I've done is I've just given myself a little bit of time out with God time out to reflect on and know and feel that my life is in service to God. So I don't get daily like work orders or a job list or things I need to do for my boss. So where is God calling me in my life to serve? So here I am and I know each of you, he, there you are, ready to serve, ready to love, to offer generosity, compassion, to be a helpful, loving soul on this planet that so desperately needs us. I wish you all the blessings and amen. Please join me as we say our intercessory prayers. The good news of salvation is not limited to a particular group or nation, but available for the whole world. In faith, let us pray to God, who is Lord of all the earth. In our cycle of prayer, we remember the nations of Liberia and Sierra Leone. Across the Anglican Communion, 
We pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. And here in Canada, we pray for our primate, Linda Nichols. In the Toronto Diocese, we pray for Andrew, our diocesan bishop, Jenny, our bishop, and our metropolitan, and the Bishop's Committee on Discipleship. Here in St. Thomas A. Beckett, we pray for Reverend David Matthews and Carolyn, Michelle Stanford and her family, the Shannon Silva, Barb Wilson, Cindy and Perry Monks, and Pauline Salz. Holy God, may the worship of your church throughout the world be attentive and expectant, ready to be set on fire again and again with the outrageous foolishness of loving, without exceptions and without limits and without praise. Servant God, let us honor you with our lives. Holy God, may all that encourages people in goodness, honesty, and compassion be blessed and grow. May all that encourages self-seeking and cruelty, prejudice, and deceit wither and be exposed as the unsatisfying rubbish it is. May we learn from one another's cultures and respect one another's differences. Servant God, let us honor you with our lives. Holy God, we thank you for the joy of human love for all among, of those among whom we live and work. We pray particularly for the loved ones who worry us with their health or circumstances or life direction. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Servant God, let us honor you with our lives. Holy God, we pray for all whose background make a belief in loving God laughable or terrifying. We pray for all who suffer mental or emotional anguish and those who despair. We pray for those facing another day of pain, another day of hunger, another day of fear. We pray for all who have special needs and for those who are ill, remembering especially within our church family, John Fraser and Vanetta Brown. We also remember our relatives and friends. We pray that God's gracious healing presence may be with them. Servant God, let us honor you with our lives. Holy God, gather into your eternal kingdom all who have come to the end of their earthly life and rejoice to see you as you really are. We remember all whom we love but can no longer see. And thank you for your overarching love and ungirding faithfulness to us. This week, we remember those who have lost friends or family close to them. Servant God, let us honor you with our lives. Holy God, we remember with gratitude all who gave up so much to bring the good news to our country and pray that with us it may continue to be spread until the whole earth knows of your truth and love. Living God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It has been an honor to be with you today and over the last month. I am looking forward to seeing all of your beautiful, smiling, faithful faces into September. We continue to be working on the plans to open up the church to regular worship and possibly other activities um, as guided by both the diocese and the health uh, units. I wish you a blessed, joyful, and safe rest of the summer. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds and your bodies in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. See you soon.